Another significant type in the Scala libraries is the option type. Now we mentioned this previously when we were looking at the find method on collections because the find method returns an option of what it is that you are looking for. It has to do that because the thing might not be there. So if we go back to looking at a REPL, we can start up another interpreter session and we can define an array something like that and we saw that if we use find so we could find for example the first element that is um, I don't know, find the first element that is less than, t than three. So find something less than three. Now, of course, that will give us back sum of one. What if we did a dot find of something greater than 10? We get none. And the question is, what can we do with these option types? So the reason they exist is because obviously find might not, might not find anything. As a general rule in Scala, if code may or may not have a value, the proper way to handle it generally is to use an option. And the reason for that is because then the language can help you enforce the fact that it might not have a value. And so the type system is actually going to force you to consider this. Now what can you do with an option? Well, it turns out there is a method that allows you to get the value of it, but you shouldn't just call that method. To demonstrate, we can do res0.get, which returns 1. The reason why you shouldn't just use that most of the time is because if you call it on none, you get an error. So we don't really want to call the, the get method normally. How else could we figure out what the, the value of, of an option is and then deal with it appropriately if it was none? Well, one way of doing this is actually to use patterns. So we can say res0, and we can do a match. And inside of here, we can have one case, a case for sum, and I'll call it i, because it was a number. <clears throat> so here we're building a pattern that has one of the two possibilities for option, a sum, and then this i will be bound to the value that we get print line i, how about we print line, let's use some string interpolation, found dollar i, there we go. Except I really feel like I should fix the capitalization there. And then we can also have a case for none. And we close this off. And of course, in this case, our expression was a sum, and so it matched here. This will this will work. It's a way that you can deal with things. It's actually not the most elegant way to deal with options. It's just the one that often for beginners is the, the most straightforward. Other methods include things like a git or else. This is very nice if there is a default value. So I want to get this, but it might not work because it, and that should not be red, that should be res. It might not have a value. And so if it doesn't have a value, if it's a none, you'd get back zero here. Let's take res one dot get or else. We saw that if I just called get on res one, I got an exception, but a get or else is fine. We just get back the, the default value that's passed through. In addition to these methods, you can also call the higher order methods we talked about for collections on an option. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, it turns out you can think of an option almost as like a little list that's either zero or one elements. Okay, whereas a list could be zero, one, two, three, four, etc. The option is just kind of a zero or one type of thing. So I could take my res zero and I could map it 
across a function that would say, let's say I'm going to double the value. So underscore times 2. This gives me back a sum of 2. Just like if res 0, instead of being an option uh, with 1 stored inside of it, a sum of 1, if res 0 had been a list with a 1 inside of it, this would work on that. Of course, the advantage of map is if I take res 1 and I map it to underscore times 2, there's no error. Okay. I had a none here. When I map a none, I get back another none. Just like if res1 had been an empty list, when I would map it, doesn't do any work. I just get back another empty list. So this is how you often want to apply functions to options because the map naturally does the right thing. It will behave properly. If there is no value, there is a value. It will do the calculation and give you back uh, what you wanted. So that's a quick look at option. It really is how you should do things if there is a value that might not be there. So if there's a possibility for not having a value, the proper way to handle that in Scala is to use an option type, and the libraries do that. So there will be a number of places where we need to interface with a library that has an option type, and it's significant. You need to know how to, how to handle those situations.